okay, but not a whole lot. And then we're going to uh, finish the introduction up. Now this is just an introduction for the next 16 weeks that are gonna be dealing with your emotions, okay? And I was telling you that I wished that somebody when I was uh, saved early on would have put me through a series of classes dealing with my emotions for the next uh, 16 weeks right after I got saved because then I probably could have saved myself a whole lot of heartache, a whole lot of struggle, and a whole lot of bondage, and a whole lot of giving in to things that I didn't need to give in to. And any one of us that struggles with our emotions, which is every one of us at times, okay, because we all have emotions, right, uh, has had to learn how to either uh, let our emotions get the best of us, and how many times does that happen? All the right, time. all the time. Or eventually, you can learn how to get the best of your emotions. Okay, and so where your emotions are no longer in control of you, but instead you've got something more powerful than you that's in control of your emotions. Now, when somebody tells you, you know, uh, you need to control yourself, let's just be honest, guys. There's not a person in this room that can control themselves. Because if any one of us in this room could control ourselves, we would not get ourselves into so much trouble all the time. Uh -huh. All right, and, and we get out of control. All right, and we get out of control mentally. We get out of, tro out of control emotionally. We get out of control volitionally or with your will, where you lose control of your will. And eventually you get out of control physically. We try to focus on the outside, and so we try to subdue the outside, but if you subdue the outside without subduing the inside, you have no control. And the way that we try to control the outside is by basically intoxicating it to the point where, you know, and I'm not saying it's always self because sometimes that intoxication comes from somewhere else. It comes from, we try to subdue it physically. You can't subdue your mental situation physically, or your emotional situation physically, okay? Or your volitional uh, portion of who you are physically. That takes a spiritual subduing. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, your inside is not the same as your outside. If I come and pinch you, that hurts physically. But that usually that pain goes away pretty quick, doesn't it? How about when somebody does something to you emotionally? No, that, uh, that stays a lot longer, right? Some of, some of us have emotional pain that has stayed with us for a lifetime. Yeah. You know, we've been hurting by this one thing that happened to us 12 years ago, and it's been hurting us ever since it happened, and it's never stopped hurting. Every time I think about it, every time I consider it, every time it comes to my mind, I find myself in a great deal of emotional pain, emotional you know, stress, emotional uh, hurt, uh, you know, all those things that come about. So there is, there, there's something to be said that there's something different about the inside of you than the outside of you. Okay, the outside of you is temporal. That's why, that's why something physical can take it away so quickly, very short-lived. Okay, the inside of you is eternal. That lives forever. The question is, where does it live forever? Is it going, it's not going to live here forever, that's for sure. And then it's going to live in one of two places forever after here. All right. Now, if you're saved, you're going to live in you're going to live with Jesus forever. Okay. And if you're not, we all know the alternative. But what I'm trying to get you to see is there's something much different about the inside of you than there is about the outside of you. Okay. And, and so and so when it comes to engaging our emotions effectually, we have to understand the difference. We have to understand what we need to help bring us under control because just like you're powerless over your addiction, right? And we'll go to a quote unquote, now we will go to Jesus. Okay. Let me just say that right off that. We will go to Jesus. We will go to the God of the Bible. We will go to the Lord for our addiction. But do we go to Jesus for our emotions? You're powerless over your emotions. Right? Do you go to Jesus for your will? Do you go to Jesus for your mental health? You're powerless over your thought life. How many of us are powerless over our thought life? Okay. And then our thought lives end up controlling our emotional lives, which end up controlling our volitional lives or our will. 
and that ends up controlling our physical life. All right, and so, and then we try to, again, what do we try to do? Try to treat it from the outside, treat it from the outside, treat it from the outside, but, the, but it doesn't work. It just kind of, you know, prolongs my misery or whatever you want to call it. I mean, yeah, it's not really not what you want, right? Uh, and, and so that being said, we have to learn how to effectually engage our emotions. That's one aspect of it. You're also going to have to learn how to, you know, fix your mind or get your mind right. You have to learn how to get your will right, but it all starts at the heart. Okay, everything starts with your heart because that is the seat of all your affections and that is the center of all your emotions. And if you don't get the heart right, you'll never get anything else right because the Bible tells us that out of the heart, Right? Out of the heart comes all the issues of life. It says, keep your heart. Only thing the Bible ever says us about when it comes to any part of who you are. Keep your heart with all diligence. That means with every bit of dedication that you got that there is in you, make sure that you keep your heart. And when it talks about keeping it, it's not talking about just holding on to it. It's talking about safeguarding it. It's talking about tending to it. It's talking about making sure that you take care of it. It's like if somebody told you, hey, will you watch my baby for a little while? Now, if you ask me to watch your baby for a little while, you don't want me to just set your baby in a room and shut the door of that room and lock that door and make sure that baby, that's not what you meant by keep my baby, keep my kids. You meant that you want me to feed them. You want me to take care of them. You want me to make sure that nothing bad happens to them. You want me to make sure that's the idea of what it's saying. Only this time, God says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are all the issues of life. Every single issue that we got comes from, for, from the heart. And that's because of all those emotions that come out of our heart. Okay. And so out of the heart, the abundance of the mouth speaketh. Okay. Out of the heart proceeded forth idolatry, drunkenness, fornication, uh, adultery, all these different things that come out of the heart of man. And so God has a lot to say about our emotions and all of it is linked to our emotions. So we're going to talk about engaging our emotions effectually. Okay. All right. And so we talked about how we were three part being the most important part is the soul. Okay. Obviously, we want to make sure that we're born again in the spirit. Once we have the spirit, now I have something more powerful than me living inside of me. Okay, you living inside of you is powerful, isn't it? All right, but is God more powerful than you? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay. So when I get saved, I I I no longer have the excuse to not have control. Right. In the essence that God has given me. His own person to come live inside of me. It's not like you just have, we, we don't really, it doesn't register. You understand that when I got born again to the Spirit, now I have Jesus Christ living inside of me. Okay, now that Jesus is living in me, he's still the same God that lives in me, right? That is also above me and is able to give me victory over whatever I need victory over. Okay, so there's no more excuses when it comes to being able to have the victory over my emotions, okay? I just have to make sure that I allow him to show me the things that I need to do in order to do so, okay? So we said the explanation very quick, because you have a notebook, effectually engaging our emotions, beginning with the word effectual, it means to productively, successfully, victoriously, and I'll slow down, effectively, and efficiently, okay, that's if I'm effectual with something, that means I'm getting the job done. Okay, that's just put it in layman's terms, all right? If you are effectual at your job, what's that? Can you repeat it? Yep, Sorry. it is It is productively, <clears throat> successfully, victoriously. Did anybody get notebooks? No, they didn't. No. So can I get somebody to please pass out these notebooks for me? Ryan, let me do that for me, please. Thank you. Make sure everybody gets one. Appreciate it. All right, and so I want to make sure you get a notebook so you can get notes, okay? All right, uh, and so the word engage, we talked about that yesterday. This is the explanation. What are we talking about when we're talking about effectually engaging our emotions? It gives the idea of entering into combat. So I'm going to combat my emotions, okay? I asked the question yesterday, and I want to ask it again today. 
How many of us can say, my emotions attack me on a regular basis? All the time. Okay. And, and, and you're either the victim or you're the victor. All right. Now, if you don't have God living inside of you, you're a victim. You don't have power over your emotions. You don't have power over your mind. You don't have power over any of that stuff. But once you have God living inside of you, you have a greater power in you. And then you have something that can control your emotions. Okay. And that's what I'm getting at. Okay. All right. So you're going to effectually or productively, successfully, victoriously, effectively, efficiently engage or combat your emotions. You're going to combat them. Now, you're not going to let them fight you. You're going to fight them. And your emotions, you can write it down, are all the feelings that, are, that pertain to the natural man or woman. Okay? Your natural emotions. Because all of those emotions are contaminated. Every last one of them. And what they're contaminated by is what is called a three-letter word, sin. They are a part of the sin nature that is inherent from Adam. And so there's not one single emotion that you are born with that is not contaminated by sin. That's why the Bible tells us that we need to be born what? Again. You need to have a new birth. When you have a new birth, now there's a new you inside of the old you like we talked about yesterday. Now you're alive in the spirit for the first time in your life. You were never alive in the spirit prior to this. You were spiritually stillborn. You had your body and you had your soul, but you had no spirit. Okay? Then you got saved. Now I'm body, soul, and spirit. Now I have this brand new baby spirit me living inside of the 30, 20, 40, 50, 60 year old, old me, who's been living this life for however long I've been alive, been calling the shots, been driving the car, been making all the choices, been deciding where we're going to go, what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, where we're not going to go. And I have to make sure that I do not continue to feed this guy that's been alive for 50 years, that's been ruining my life, whose name is Dave Wilson. And now I've got to feed the new me that's inside of me as much as possible, starving the old me as much as possible so that I can empower the new person that's in me as much as possible to control the old person. Because the old person was out of what? Control. If you were in control, how many of you all could look back and say, okay, yeah, you know what? I really was out of control, honestly. How many of us can raise our hand and say I was out of control? I tried to take back control. I tried to stop. I tried to, but I had no control. Okay? So you need to empower the new you to get as much control as possible in you as fast as possible. Through the Spirit. Of Through the Spirit of God. He grows up a lot faster than we do. Yeah. Okay? So, I mean, he's, yeah. Yeah, he, grows, he grows super fast. Super but you got to feed him the right stuff. Okay? And you can't continuously feed both sides. Because when you continuously feed both sides, you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot and you're getting nowhere, okay? Because you're taking six steps forward and then what? Half a dozen back. All right, so make sure you feed the new side. That's why nine months. That's why it's six months. That's why one year of getting away and let's just feed it as much as we can. Let's drown you in as much Jesus as possible so that the new you can grow as fast as possible. Don't worry about everybody else, right? Because if you worry about everybody else, that will mess you up. You just worry about yourself and Jesus. You just focus on me and Jesus for as long as you can. As long as you're going to be. I don't care if you, if you say right now, I'm only going to be here three months. Then make this next three months about you and Jesus. Now, I don't know what's going through your head, but if it's going to be six months, make it six months about you and Jesus. Don't worry about jobs. Don't worry about family. Don't worry about nothing else but getting as close to God as you can and growing as much in God as you can so that in this time frame, you can, be, you can empower the new you as much as possible so that you can get control of the old you because the old you is out of control. All right? And it starts with your heart. Because most of us lost complete control by following our hearts. Oh, yeah. Following our feelings. Following our emotions. Letting our emotions control us and make decisions for us that cost us family, that cost us freedoms, that cost us, you know, 
all kinds of things. What's the, how much have you paid? How much has your heart cost you? Don't tell, don't answer the question, but just think, think about it, okay? All right, that is the explanation. You've got to learn how to combat your emotions. If you don't beat your emotions up, your emotions will beat you up, okay? All right, the expectation was number two. The expectation, God expects us to overcome our emotions because now God lives inside of us, so we don't have an excuse not to, okay? God gave you new emotions to combat your old emotions. When you got saved, God gave you his spirit. And his spirit came with a set of new emotions that will combat every old emotion that you have. Say that again, God expects us to. Com God expects you to overcome your, new e your old emotions. Okay? All of your old emotions, because God has put a set of new emotions inside of you. Okay? We know those emotions, right? We say them all the time here. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Okay? Grace. Huh? Grace. Well, grace is not in that. Grace is something entirely different. You have mercy and grace that come from God. But the fruit of the Spirit is that's talking about those new emotions that God has put inside of you. Okay? So you have God emotions. And, and just like we can combine some of our old emotions, how many of us can be angry and sad and jealous all at the same time? Okay, and that creates a whole kind of different flavor of emotion, right? Bitter, unforgiving, right? And, and, and hurt all at the same time. Well, you can combine those new emotions too, right? You can combine love and joy and goodness and use those through the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you by being filled with the Spirit, and that will combat your old emotions. And we're not we'll talk about more of that later, but I'm saying that God has every right to expect you to overcome your emotions and not let your emotions overcome you because God wants to show the world that this is what happens when I recreate somebody. I want to show you what I'm able to do, how I'm able to fix the inside of the individual. And God does not focus from the outside in. God focuses from the inside out. You want to fix the outside right now. Right? And God says, no, I want to fix the inside. And not right now. I want to take a little while to do it. I want, I want, I want to do this gradually so that it sticks. And we're going to, we're, we're going to work on one of your emotions, which is your impatience. Because that's a horrible emotion. <laughs> got to have it right now. It has to happen right now. It has to be today. Got to do this now. And how many of us have gotten in trouble from that emotion before? Got to have it right now. It leads us to 50,000 other emotions. Uh, yeah, it does. It sure does. But it didn't happen <laughs> yesterday. Right? And so, and so God gives us uh, these emotions. And God wants us to overcome our old emotions. Okay? But the expectation is there. And God has every right. Because God saved you. God paid for you. God bought you. God moved inside of you. So God has every right to expect you to at least keep your end of the bargain, which is let me show people what I can do with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So fair expectation. We can expect to never have much of a testimony until we learn how to effectually engage our emotions. Yeah. Because I don't care if you quit doing drugs, you can still be a mean person. Oh, yeah. Still be a horrible dad, horrible mom, unloving, unforgiving, unfair, you know, accusational, mean uh, self-righteous, prideful, hurtful person. I mean, and you can still have Jesus living inside of you and still be that same exact person. Walk into church. Happens all the time. Right? Because they don't, they don't, and, and they, and they excuse it because they don't look at that. They don't look at them. They don't look at that as sin. But me mistreating you or looking down on you or falsely accusing you or, or being rude to you or yelling at you or saying hurtful things to you is just as much, if death and life are the power of the tongue, I could have just murdered you, right? It's just as much sin. And so, and so, and so we, we have to understand that, listen, you will never have much of a testimony if you can't learn how to effectually engage your emotions, Okay. So you have to fight your emotions. We said it yesterday, before they fight you. You don't let your emotions swing the first punch. All right? Yeah. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Do not go hit somebody. Don't go hit anybody. That's not what I said, okay? But go ahead and hit your anxiety before your anxiety hits you. Yes, ma'am? What exactly do you mean when you 
me saying you're not going to have much of a testimony if you let well, if you let your emotions because be because I, think I know what you're saying, but I'm not. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is this: uh, if you can't stop flying off the handle, if you can't stop yelling, if you can't stop accusing everybody, if you can't handle your frustration, if you can't handle your anxiety, I mean, because because how are you going to, okay, how are you going to go battle a giant if you're living in fear? Right. How are you going to, you know, uh, maintain your testimony if you tell somebody off every time somebody upsets you? Okay, how are you going to maintain a testimony if you get so depressed all the time that, you know, you know I mean, I could go on and on and on and on, right? Uh, your emotions should, if they're in control of you, you don't really have much of a testimony. And I'm just telling you. If you don't, if your emotions are causing you to isolate yourself from everybody, okay? Because we're talking about a testimony for who? I'm not talking about a testimony. Who are we talking about a testimony for? God. God. Okay, so, so your life is supposed to be uh, an evidence of what God can do through you, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I was thinking, um, the way I got that from you was like, if you can't overcome your emotions, you have nothing to say that you overcame that God helped you with. That's how that, yeah, and that's a big thing too, right? Now, you could say, you, could say, you know, I haven't done, because we've all been around this people. We've been around somebody that hasn't done drugs and Five six years, but they are just absolutely a jerk or me. Well, Scott's done. I'm not saying he, I'm not saying him because I mean no. I'm saying, but you've been around people that have had lots of clean time, but are still you know, you know just mean or just or ugly or, or hurtful or doing other things. And, and so it just because you're not doing drugs again, that doesn't make you a good person, right? And we're not just talking about drugs because sometimes, I mean, that's just such a small thing. Like I said, it's such a small aspect of being a good person, right? Uh, you know, just. Just because I don't do something that's bad does not mean that I do anything that's good, no. right? And those emotions that God gave you to overcome your old emotions are the emotions that bring good in people's lives, okay? How many all think that when you love people, that's good, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, when you bring joy into the room, mm -hmm. that's good. When you add peace to the place, that's good, mm -hmm. all right? But when you add frustration, when you had anxiety, how many of y'all felt the anxiety off of other people? Are you having, I mean, oh, yeah. am I the only one that can, when, when, when there's a whole bunch of, you know, they, feelings are felt. Mm -hmm. They're contagious. I said it yesterday, very contagious. You can expect the way, if you're feeling a certain way, other people start feeling that way. Do you know the entire army of Israel was afraid? The entire army. Right? And that was in the case with David and Goliath. So I'm saying, it is contagious. You can expect that if you are feeling a certain way that you can end up causing other people to feel a certain way. And we've all been there where, you know, I'm feeling frustrated, then this person gets frustrated. I'm feeling bad, this person starts feeling bad. Everybody in the house is having a bad what? Bad. Pretty much Monday for the whole world. <laughs> it's Monday. So what? This is the day that the Lord hath made. I'll rejoice and be glad. And I don't know what God calls it, but I'm pretty sure he didn't call it Monday. Amen. Uh, anyways, uh, just the expectation. Okay. All right. Then we said that there needed to be, in order for that to happen, if we want, if we want to expect to be able to effectually engage our emotions, then there needs to be education. Right. You got to learn how to engage each one of these emotions. So we took 16 emotions that we feel like are the ones that people deal with the most. And we're going to teach you best we can from the Bible how to effectually engage those 16 emotions over the course of the next 16 weeks or however long it takes with each emotion. Uh, Sammy's gonna start off with fear. And so that's a big one. How many of us struggle with fear? All of us, okay. And we're gonna look at that one. And then we're gonna look at 15 more after that. Uh, and I think it's going to be very helpful for you. But look again when it comes to education. Look again in Proverbs chapter 2. <clears throat> Just by recap. Proverbs chapter 2. Beginning of verse number 2. 
Actually, we'll start with verse 1. It says, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge. Now, let's talk about the things that we cry about and the things that we cry for. But he says, If you'll cry after knowledge and lift us up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the ways of his saints. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yea, every good path when wisdom entereth into what? Thine heart and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. Okay? Uh, it says, Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee to deliver thee from the way of the evil man. Now, everybody take your finger and do this right here. Okay? Because this is the evil person. All right? And that's, this is the one I need to be delivered from. Yeah. Okay? More than anything else, I need deliverance from day. Okay? Yeah. All right. So, education. And then we said, excuses, there aren't any. We lost all of our excuses once we get saved. Okay? Uh, because we're told that, you know, if we're, if it's because of our ignorance, right, mm -hmm. then we're allowing Satan to get advantage of us, right? And when Satan gets advantage of us, he takes it out on who? Everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, he'll, he'll, I mean, he'll take, he'll take, he'll get advantage of one person and take it out on absolutely everybody that he can. And we see that happen all the time too, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now, today I told you, we'll look at some examples, Okay. So I want to look at some examples. I think we've been going a little longer than 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and take a break right here uh, on that recap. And we'll look at our first example in Psalms 25. Psalms 25, okay? And remember, we're talking about emotions, okay? Which is all the feelings, okay? All the, all the feelings that are natural to the old man or the old woman, okay?